That's right, some bugs have been dropping, dudes. And it seems like the new meta is starting to form up. As you can see here, it's nothing but tons and tons of troops. So fights are looking like this. Stop troops dropping. You better be ready for some long fights, guys. Bring, bring in some damage. Hey, anyways, it's your boy Darth Shigong, gaming on the dark side. G O T D S, got this. <laughs> Coming at you with this week's video on this weekend's event. We're going to be covering um, Achilles. So let's check it out. As we move into episode four of our event overview and free to play analyses. <laughs> where we go over the cost of the event as well as the event in general. All right, so before we get started, don't forget to hit that like button. Make sure you guys comment. It helps out the YouTube algorithm. And if I earn it, hit that subscribe button. Thanks. So Achilles is making his comeback, I guess. I mean, I'm not sure he's ever there to begin with. I had big high hopes for this guy. But anyways, let's look at this. Um, Achilles returns with updated prestige skills that bring unending waves of zealous troops into battle. Experience the heavenly power of his new synergy relic, Olympia's Drippania, which further empowers his human troops in battle. Sounds cool, but it is it? I've seen it in action now in Zalon's stream, and to say I'm less than impressed is actually speaking nicely. Because, <laughs> oh man, dude. Oh man. Yeah, even at P10, with the synergy relic, he was getting trounced. Um, it, you know, it's just not enough power. Not for what they have with these new Archmages and even the Dragon Slayers. It's, I mean, this guy's three metas by, back now, right? But anyways, the event did start today, Thursday. I apologize for the late um, uh, video. It's just that I didn't get the blog until this morning, and it takes a while to kind of put these things together. But it does start today, ends on Monday, gives you roughly 90 hours or so, obviously less than now. But if you look at the numbers I'll have for you later, you have more than enough time to grind this out if you are so inclined. So if you're in a rush to get down and start doing the event, let's break it down with the TLDR reports. You can grind this event out for free if you have 17,200 gems lying around for your pure grind. Um, if you're going to be doing it with saved relics, if you have 41 saved relics, you're guaranteed to be able to finish this event. Um, hopefully your luck will be better than one star rolls, but it's all you get. Hey, any combination of 17,000 to 41 relics will get this event done for you. If you happen to be a spender, your TLDR report's a little bit different. How much is it going to cost you in bucks to get this done if you want to finish it? Well, if you're going for booster packs and the $13.99 booster packs available, it will take about six of them to get it done. Looking about $84. Or if you don't mind grinding, you can do it for half that at 40 bucks, just buying two 10 um, uh, K packs of gems and you're good to go. So hey, up to you how you want to spend that. Myself personally, I'd rather grind it out and save myself the 40 bucks. But I know for some people, time is money and your time is worth more. So hey, totally up to you guys. Either way, that's your Spender TLDR report. Now the TLDR report's out of the way. We're going to be getting deeper into this stuff. So if you're down for it and you want to watch it, pay attention, guys. Grab your tea, join Kermit, sit back, and enjoy the show. So we got Achilles. He's back. Now his regular skills from before are pretty much the same. If you already have them, you know what they are. If you don't, I'll cover them really quickly. So his first skill is going to give you 180% Titan and Troop physical damage. Not bad. 40% Titan base health. 25% Titan melee resist. Now the very start of the battle, he's going to drop two of each human troop, but an Omega form. So you're going to get two Omega Archers, two Omega Spearmen, and two Omega Militia. And they drop randomly all over the battlefield, which sometimes is great and sometimes not. But it does make them awesome for something like Conquest and even Assault. If you don't have, like, let's say, Sekhmet, because he drops a ton of units all right in the very beginning, and they can be moved around by you. Now, second skill, 25% Titan Troop Melee Resist. 
250% Titan and Troop physical damage two times an attack. So it's 500% extra physical damage. And then 176% Archer armor piercing two times an attack. So that's what, 352, I think? Something like that? No, a little more than that. Um, anyways, so yeah. So it's a lot of armor piercing for the archers. But with the current meta, you need like six, seven hundred percent armor piercing to be able to do any actual damage with your archers. Now for his third skill, we have 180% human troop health, 44% titan critical. Now here's a little extra. While Achilles is alive, every 10 seconds, you're gonna get 30% human and troop, or human troop, physical damage and armor piercing a max of six times. That's an extra 180% damage and armor piercing if you can keep Achilles alive for at least a minute. So make sure you guys do that to get the boosts for your troops. Don't just toss them out in there. Now for this fourth skill, you're gonna have 44% troop critical, 100% Titan and troop armor, two times an attack. So that's 200% um, uh, armor, 176% militia armor piercing, two times an attack. So that's now 352% militia armor piercing. But once again, we still need like six or 700% guys to really be able to do anything. 25% um, Titan and troop range resist for the fifth skill, 25% Titan and troop all elemental resist. Eh. And, all, and then we've got on allied troop death, plus 30% Titan physical damage and armor piercing a max of 15 times, which is quite a bit. But like I said, I mean, we're not necessarily trying to make Achilles out to be the guy to go cause much damage. In the current metas, for the most part, unless you're using an infiltrator, the Titan himself really isn't the, the make or break for the, um, uh, the attacks, right? It's all about the troops. So what did they change? Well, they changed his prestige skills. So at prestige level 10, you got 70% base human troop health and damage. Um, from prestige level one, you're gonna get on allied death, you're gonna summon um, Omega human troops max seven. So anytime um, someone dies, one of your troops dies, you're gonna be pulling out an Omega troop. Not too sure what it's gonna be. It could be a mixture of different things. It doesn't really say, but you'll get seven of them. Um, on prestige level four, whenever an Omega spearman passes away, you'll get two regular spearmen and 100% spearman armor. At prestige level seven, on any Omega Archer death, you'll get two regular archers and they'll give you an extra 100% archer armor piercing. And then on level 10 prestige, on any Omega Militia death, you call two regular militia and 100% militia physical damage. So it's just troops upon troops upon troops which, like I said, I mean, is a in the current meta seems to be the way they're going, right? They're just going for mass amounts of just troops on the field, going at it nonstop. You kill one, two more pops up. He kills one of yours, three of yours pop up. They're all over the place. So it's going to take some management um, because, at least from my experience, when a lot of troops start bulking all together, not all of them are attacking the unit. They're just kind of standing around. So you got to like move them around or do more stuff. So, I mean, it, it's kind of annoying in that sense from uh, you know, from me attacking somebody and they have nothing but endless troops and they keep living. It makes a fight last forever, if not times you out. You think you got the fight done all of a sudden, ba some more freaking corrupted units or Omega units or whatever units pop up and that's crazy. So it just seems to be the way that's where they are going right now, right? They've added more power. Now they're just adding more things that get demolished or a combination of both. So just keep that in mind, guys. But that is the new prestige skills. That's where the change is. Moving on from Achilles, let's take a look at the four star relics that we're gonna get in the event. Um, you're gonna get Ancient Sling, you're gonna get Trumpet of Iron, Apollo's Lyre, and Metis Syrup, right? Or the Scissor. Now these are all relics that are gonna help boost up Spearmen, your troop uh, physical damage, criticals, um, armor piercing, some melee resist, your archers, all good stuff to put on someone like Achilles. Um, the only one that I would say that I use probably more often than not, I love that scissor. It's really, really cool. I mean, 20% all troop critical, 50% archer damage, 20% spearman melee and range resist. So it's great for that meat shield. Um, and, you know, all around, that's a great relic. Apollo's Liar is not too bad, but the only problem with some of these physical relics is they only work on the, you know, physical troops. So that kind of limits things. I like things that are a little bit more general so I can put them on different Titans. Um, that's why Ancient Sling with 30% troop damage, that goes for everybody, right? 
and all. So that's any troop we're going to use. So that's sometimes helpful if you want to get some more damage in. But all in all, eh, you know, not, not the best relics. The only one I would say that I really, really like is that syrup. Now, we also have the brand new Synergy Relic. This one here is Olympia's Drapania. You got 50% Titan and Troop physical damage, 50% Troop physical damage, which is crazy. So that's basically 100% uh, troop damage, I guess, and all that physical damage. And you got 40% human troop armor piercing, which I said, armor piercing is key. Now the synergy when equipped to Achilles is at level five, you get 50% base human troop health, so they live a little bit longer. And at level 10, you're gonna get 50% base human troop damage, so they hit harder. Now, I really wish this would have been more about armor piercing because from what I can tell, in this meta, guys, if you do not have the armor piercing, you are not going to get through the defenses that are currently meta. It's just not going to happen. They have way too much armor um, for you to do anything. As for the other Titan available in this event, it's very, very random with Chernobog. All right, Chernobog is one of the old DG Titans. I call them one of the forgotten, one, forgotten Titans because... For the most part, no one really went for them. Chernobog and Bellabog, just kind of like Oni and Huntress. No one, at least not that I know, spent DGs on them. But um, he's available in the event. I need him to finish my Pantheon. Uh, I want to get all the Titans. I'm, uh, I'm three away from the full 100 and I think 76 Titans that they have in there. But anyways, overall, guys, he's he's a champion. Um, he Or guardian, my bad. And he does buff himself. Uh, looks like he does Storm Maidens. Uh, and Imperials. It, it's a weird combination. But he's available at 12,000 souls, so if you just want a four-star Titan and you don't want to go much further than that, 12,000 souls in this event will get you pretty much all the event relics, a good chunk of the gems and portal, and all the portal stones actually in the event. Um, and you can just take those relics and use them for the finish plus coming up with Hell and the Axes of War. The last things we're going to look at when it comes to the event are the event intangibles. These are like the things that don't have necessarily cash value, but they do have a lot of play value, but they're very subjective to the person playing the game. So in this event, the event intangibles are the two four-star Titans, Chernobog and Achilles. You got five four-star relics and 550 divine gems. Now, you always want to ask yourself if the juice is worth the squeeze, is the grind worth it, the spend worth it for these event intangibles, because that's kind of what you're really playing for when you go for a full finish on this event. All right, it's time to move into the free to play section of this and the grinding. Um, so, but remember, before we start doing the math, we got to look at a few things that I do not factor in. I do not factor in the portal stone refresh rate or portal stone reward drops because I have no idea what you're going to get in the event. It's going to be different for everybody. Next up, um, if you have a slower than 60 second PB attack turnaround, I upped that from 30 seconds because 30 seconds a lot of people weren't able to maintain. But if you can do a minute in between attacks from beginning to finish, the beginning of one attack to the beginning of the next, it's about a minute, then you can use the timetables I'm using. It, uh, otherwise, adjust it accordingly. If it takes you five minutes for every attack, well, hey, you're going to do five times uh, the time I say it's going to take to grind this out. I also do not factor in any boost relics higher than the one star. So two star, three star, and four star are out when it comes to my math. So think of this as a guesstimation. If you want to know what it would be like with the three uh, four star relic later on, I will have a table for you. But for the math in this breakdown, it's all based off a of one star roll, you know, common luck. Not only to call it bad luck, it's common rolls. In this event, the Chosen Titans are going to go this way. For any three-star Guardian Titan, you're going to get a 1.1 boost. Four-star Guardian Titans are going to get a 1.2 boost. And the top boosting Titans this event for 1.4 are Achilles, Crystallis, Tengu, and Valkyrie. I'll be using Crystallis myself. I want to try and get it leveled up. But those are the ones that you got. The boost relic for this event is the Greek Scroll. When it comes to grinding an event out, we got to look at the event rewards in the event that help us do that. In this event... We got ourselves 850 portal stones, 4,700 gems, and six event tokens. So those are the rewards that are gonna help you get this thing done if you wanna use them for your grind. Moving on to the grind, let's look at a pure grind, not using any relics at all. So with a 1.4 boost Titan, you wanna grind this entire thing out, you're looking at 1,500 battles to get the whole event done. Utilizing the rewards in the event, that's going to leave you with about 3,650 portal stones to finish it up. 
Now, if you don't have those stones saved up, you'll need some gems. That'll take about 17,200 gems to get all those stones. And it's going to take you about 25 hours to grind out the entire event if you're inclined to do so. Now let's take a look at what it would take just to get some of the minimums in this event so you can have saved up tokens for future events. We're going to start off at the bottom with 2,500 souls. This minimum will get you three event tokens for the next event. It takes you about 179 battles, maybe about a three hour grind. You can see the other numbers here for portal stones and all that stuff needed, but you're good. The next level minimum would be 6,000 souls. At this minimum, you'll get four event tokens. It takes about 429 battles to pump that out. You're looking at about seven hours of grinding over the course of the weekend, but you'll have four tokens for the next event. The final step, if we're talking about just doing the minimum to get things done, is 11,000 souls. That's gonna get you six event tokens for next week's event. You're looking at about 786 battles, not horrible. Um, it's going to take you about 13 hours. So let's just say you didn't have any gems or any stones saved up. It'll take about 6,000 gems to do it. But you gotta remember, six tokens is actually 12,000 gems in value. So for about 50%, you're getting that done. So if you're willing to put the grind in, you can get yourself six tokens for the next event. Now, if you're wondering how many boost tokens you should have saved up for this event to guarantee a finish, if you have the worst luck possible and got nothing but one star rolls for all your saved relics, you're looking at 41 saved relics. Using the six that are included in the event, that's 47 relics total to do it. Very expensive, especially for this Titan um, and during this time in this meta. I wouldn't do it, so I hope that you don't either. You get more than, let's say, five or six one stars in a row. Stop pulling for a bit, play, and then maybe come back a little bit later. Now, as I said earlier, guys, hopefully you have way better rolls than one star. And if you do, I broke it down for you guys here in this handy little chart based off a 1.4 boost Titan, what you're going to get with a two, three, and four star roll. It's going to show you how many less battles you have to do, how many less portal stones it's going to take, how many less gems it's going to take, how much time we can shave off your grind, and overall the total you'll get per relic. Now, remember, these are unstacked. So if you stack them, the numbers will be slightly different. But unstacked, this is what you're going to get. So just use that in your own calculations based off the things you have saved up and the rolls you get during your time playing this event. So the final numbers, guys, to answer you on the question of how many tokens and gems do I need to have saved up to do this event? Well, hey, with a 1.4 boost Titan, the maximum amount of gems you need to have saved up is 17,200. The maximum amount of tokens will be 41 saved tokens. Now, obviously, if you have... Way better rolls, you'll need less tokens, which also means you'll need less gems. So just keep that in mind, guys. These are the maximums. If you want to guarantee a finish, you have to have one or the other get it done. And that brings us to some thoughts. And is it worth it going for Achilles? If you don't have Achilles, uh, I mean, he's a fun Titan. He's, he's good for conquest and stuff like that, but he's not like the end-all be-all. Um, with the brand new Synergy Relic and his Prestige skills, that would have been awesome maybe back in the Dragon Slayer meta, but with the new Arc Mages, especially like um, uh, Necromancer, stuff like that, just the, the sheer amount of armor that these guys have. Achilles just does not bring enough armor piercing. It's just not enough to be able to take it out. Um, I was really hoping that he would have had Corrupted Militia as an attack Titan as opposed to defensive like Runa. Now, that would have made me go for him because Corrupted Units are freaking awesome, and I would love to see that, and it'd be fun. But overall, guys, he's a good for PP attacks, but not much else. I don't think it's worth it going for this event, since especially we have Axis of War coming up with Hell, um, a reskill probably. We got uh, you know another uh, Archmage coming up a couple weeks after that, or you know from now. So I mean, all in total, not really worth it. What is worth it though is going for the tokens. So um, whether you're going for 2.5 uh, thousand souls, 6,000 souls, or 11,000 souls. Those are way better goals to go for, guys, in this event rather than 21,000 souls. And that's just my final thoughts. All right, guys. Well, that brings us to the end of the video for this week. Once again, I apologize for the tardiness. Um, the blog coming out the same day as the event really throws me off. Uh, so, you know, I'm busy grinding. I, I don't like wasting time making the video. I should say spending time. But you guys are worth it, so I popped it out there. Hopefully for my weekend warriors, this does help you decide whether or not to do this event. Um, 
Until all that happens, guys, I hope to see all of you guys this weekend playing the game with me. So with that, I'm out of here, man. This is Dar Shigong, and I hope to catch all of you guys gaming on the dark side.